Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, while I'm just bringing up uh, some slides, would you like to quickly give yourself a little bit of a shake? I know everyone's been sitting here for quite some time, and uh, hopefully it's uh, not hopefully it's not too uh, too long my presentation. So just quickly shake yourself about. Okay. Quickly to uh, introduce myself, um, I am from Channel Advisor. We're an American company who specialise in helping companies to sell through marketplaces like Amazon, uh, eBay. Uh, one of our partners, Zalando, was here a couple of talks ago. Um, I'm going to focus my presentation on looking at the changing business model of Amazon, Facebook, and Google, and how these guys are competing with each other more than ever before. And I'm gonna provide you guys with some strategies of how to leverage this business model change to create sustainable growth for your business. I'm hoping um, to get through some of that content and, uh, and you guys can, can take something away from it. it. It's really designed as a presentation um, for the largest businesses in the world, those ones that are looking at cross-border trade as a competitive advantage, and looking to enter into markets like um, uh, the US, the UK, Germany, uh, China, where e-commerce is already matured. Um, but if you're a business who's uh, small to medium, and this is you're at the start of this, uh, this journey, I'm hoping I'm gonna give you some takeaways um, that can help you to, to get to that point too. Let's start with talking about Amazon. Um, of course, everybody in this room uh, knows the name, and of course, <laughs> I assume that most of you are, are probably operating on, uh, on this channel today. I wanted to highlight a couple of key statistics for you. And the first one is that there are over 180 countries that Amazon um, is able to service through, through their various platforms. And there's 14 of those platforms that operate um, uh, globally today, including uh, the United Emirates that, that launched earlier this year. Um, Australia was only a couple of years ago, and that's where, where I'm from, uh, and a couple of other markets through, uh, through the, uh, Europe and uh, North America. Across these marketplaces, Amazon has a business uh, fulfilled by Amazon and their fulfillment centers, and they have over 175 of these worldwide. The goal of those fulfillment centers, as, as many of you guys will know, is to um, create the best customer experience and the shortest amount of time for delivery. And so they've really grown and excelled at this. And this year they've invested in their US market uh, to be able to deliver in less than 24 hours. So it's, 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 a, it's an absolutely monumental achievement. What I'd like to focus in this presentation on in regards to Amazon is, uh, is actually their product search pages and, and where you might be able to, to optimize um, your business to be able to take advantage um, of their product pages. And I'll, and I'll show you a couple of things. The first bit is, this is a, a real life search. I did this uh, when I was putting together this presentation last night. And uh, you'll notice at the very top, it's, it's amazon.com. So this is a search on the US web page, not on the UK or Germany. Um, and it's for a, a pretty generic branded term, uh, luggage. Right? Um, and I was, it was, I was coming into Athens, I was thinking I've got to get a new suitcase, which is, which is why I picked this one. Uh, you'll notice that as I, as I go through the next couple of slides, this is um, continuing on. So it's, it's you know, four, four pages of the same uh, search, right? And you can follow along there. If you're a brand who's, who's from Greece, um, or you, you're operating in Europe and you're looking to expand out into the US, um, what is the likelihood that a customer who searches for luggage is actually able to find uh, your products? Uh, my recommendation, if you just go and uh, create your, your product on Amazon.com, put your products into Fulfilled by Amazon, is that actually you, you probably won't generate too many sales, and I'll show you why. Um, today, this is now a, 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 you know, nearly a 20-year business, and all of the slots that um, I'll show you here 
are all paid for slots in some capacity. In the first example, at the very top, you've got the uh, advertising, which is from a, a, a particular competitor. Um, as you scroll down, Amazon Basics, the business that Amazon has got into, that they've, they've, uh, they've created their own products, they're actually bidding on the advertising uh, slots and winning those slots, and who knows whether there's, there's much ethics in that, but um, those are sponsored brand campaigns that are for Amazon Basics, and then they get the next slot underneath it for their own brands, which again show Amazon Basics. So if you're a uh, competitor in this market, you'll actually only show up um, about four, four scrolls down the same page. Does that make sense? I'm seeing a couple of nods. Um, and really, if you're a new entrant into this market, the reality is that you're not going to win any of those slots that's available as an, as an organic seller because those slots have a vast amount of sales history, firstly. Um, they've got a ton of good reviews and their sellers are probably pretty good at delivering on the customer experience that Amazon has set. So if they're a seller um, and they're fulfilling themselves, Amazon has good data to be able to say that's a quality seller um, who's going to deliver on that 24-hour promise. So really, what do you do if you're a seller that's, that's entering into that market? Um, and I've got a couple of comments to make. The first is that this is only going to get worse. Um, the, the advertising market on Amazon is now a uh, $9.85 billion business, and it's projected to almost double over the next two years. And if you think about it logically, it makes sense. The, the marketplace business and the fulfillment business that Amazon have has underlying expensive costs. To be able to deliver, for example, or run a, run a massive warehouse that Amazon has, has real costs. You have to pay people, you have to set up facilities, you have to buy land. But advertising is pure profit. They can um, design campaigns and design algorithms that uh, frankly just improve their gross margin. And so they're investing heavily into this space and brands are, are able to win in this space too if you can invest inside Amazon marketing. So we expect that it's, it's gonna grow much faster than Facebook, Twitter, Google, Microsoft, um, or Verizon's uh, assets as well. And so my advice here is actually, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna invest in the US, then you have to be part of that advertising program. It's, it's, it's just something you need to do. And you need to be bidding on Amazon advertising the same way that you do for Google and Facebook and take into account um, those costs in your, in your profit and loss statement. Um, the second piece of that piece of advice is that this is not a mature business outside of uh, .com. Maybe a little bit in, in .co.uk and .de for Germany. Um, but if you look at places like .com.au for the same search luggage, it doesn't have Amazon Basics come up and actually um, organic results show up on the very first page. So, so my advice there, if it's, if it's not so obvious, is sell in markets where, where Amazon is still building out a business and be a first mover in that. The next uh, company we'll talk about from a business model change is Google. Of course, everybody's familiar with, with Google search. What you might not realize is the size and the scale that they have uh, been able to grow themselves to in terms of the Android platform and the assets that they have within, within that company. They now have over a billion devices where Google comes pre-installed on, 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 uh, on your uh, device. And even in the iOS uh, platform, they're the default search engine, right? Um, which actually makes their device count probably much larger. And you know, by default, a consumer will be searching on Google. They've also invested heavily in new products, including smart displays, speakers, and then what I would call feature and entry level phones in, in, in China and India that can provide some of the Google services at scale, but at much lower pricing. And just to go back a second to the smart displays and speakers, the interaction with those devices is different. It's, it's, it's with voice. Um, and so the search results that you end up finding, they need to be really specific and they need to be really refined because no one's gonna sit there and ask um, to shop for luggage and listen to 10 different options. They're gonna wanna have the, the first one or two be the right answer if they're gonna make a purchase with with some of these platforms. I've kind of given away where this business model is going, but Google have launched in, in the US um, service experiences 
to be able to allow you to purchase directly from Google's website. So on the right hand side, this is a search for um, jockey men's, I guess, um, boxes. And those products there, you can add it to your cart and you can transact with Google and they'll work out the fulfillment with the, with the seller themselves. You'll never go to the, the seller's website. Now think about that for a second. If you're a brand and you own your, your customer experience today, um, Google is, is making forays into cutting you out from a, from a customer experience perspective. And you can either look at that and go, okay, that's a bad thing, I don't want to be a part of it, I want to try and own as much of the customer experience. Or you can look at leveraging their size and their scale and look at what the customer experience they do deliver. I would rather shop on Google and know that I'm giving them my transaction information and not another third party. And I think many uh, consumers who are conscious of privacy and are, are conscious of um, you know, seamless frictionless customer experience are going to leverage these types of programs. What I mentioned before as well was uh, voice and how you interact with these devices is different. When we look at Google uh, Assistant, uh, it's able to offer you some suggestions in a really quick and easy way. And Google has much, much better data, um, if, if I can say, I think, I think, uh, has much better data than someone like Amazon to be able to offer some of this, uh, this natural search engine um, results than maybe just product information that, that Amazon's trying to deliver. And then the last uh, company we want to talk about is, is Facebook. You know, my, my partner was asking me as um, I was putting together this presentation, she said, why don't you use the, the Facebook logo here? And actually, I'm not sure if everyone has seen this, but this is actually Facebook's new logo. They launched it um, just this month, I think. Uh, and actually, th I wanted to talk about their new brand identity and, and, and what their business model looks like over the next uh, couple of years, what, what they're indicating to, to the markets. They've separated out what they call Facebook company which is that first box, and you can go onto their website and read about their brand, the Facebook company, from what they um, call the Facebook app. So the newsfeed that you're familiar with and the Facebook that everyone here has probably used is a separate component now to Facebook the company. What they're trying to uh, differentiate is that the Facebook company um, can create assets that are shared amongst all of their different products and services. So the Facebook app, Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp can share things like Facebook Pay, where you sign up once to Facebook Pay to maybe send um, cash to relatives uh, uh, on Messenger and collect back payments uh, on, on WhatsApp. But you can also go ahead on Instagram and check out with your same card details that you have given them on Facebook Pay. Now, um, Instagram Checkout was in beta in the US. They launched with about 20 brands this year. And we see this program as being abs absolutely transformative from a product discovery perspective because it becomes so easy to find new brands, find new products, and then go ahead and purchase without ever leaving the, the Facebook app. Uh, sorry, the Instagram app. And I think that is what, at the end of the day, all these brands are trying to do, is go from product discovery all the way through to purchase and compete on that full funnel, um, whether you're looking at Amazon, Google, or Facebook and its, and its various assets. And so um, I'd like to take, take the point then, well, what do you do about that if you're a brand or you're a retailer? And I think it comes down to three things. First, leverage the business model changes. And to leverage the business model changes, you need to understand what's going on here. Understand the driving forces behind the revenue. So really dig deep into the P&L statement. If you're a, a marketing head or an e-commerce head, really understand the cost drivers that the supply chain have that flow onto the, the, the ROAS and um, CPC that you, you need to achieve. And then finally, unlock budget by winning over those exact stakeholders that, that I was just mentioning. So we'll talk about each point really briefly. To leverage the business model changes, what I suggested is um, buy cheap and sell high. It's, it's quite a basic concept, but if you think about the ad properties in uh, Amazon.com.au versus Amazon US, that mature market is costing you far greater to get into and to scale 
then potentially a market like Amazon.com.au. So not only do you have what I would call the first mover advantage, being there before other big players get there, um, you're also getting the exact same returns but at a lower cost because they're not there, right? Um, on that first mover advantage, it's more than just about cost. It's also about sales history and about uh, optimizing to the algorithm of these places. So I've suggested um, join Google Shopping. Get on these programs, they're, they're available now. Instagram checkout is, is, is fantastic. You connect your product catalog up to Facebook. You can make your products available on their marketplace too. And accept things like Facebook Pay and Apple Pay and integrate your website to be able to offer those seamless customer experiences. Because while some of these things cost money and uh, p potentially um, take away from more profitable ways of um, transacting, um, if they're easier for the customer, we, we've got good data to be able to show that, that that leads to conversion. And the last bit in, in say what is invest in voice optimized product content. If you're not investing in voice content or product content today, by the time this program matures, and it's probably only uh, a few years away, um, you'll, be, you'll be left behind. And, and I think this is not just something that big companies are trying to do, but actually if you're optimizing for slots one and two on Google, that's the strategy to, to get ahead for, for, uh, for voice optimized um, Google Assistant and Amazon's Alexa. The second bit on, on understanding the driving forces behind your revenue is, and it's very obvious, but <laughs> buy a calculator and understand the maths that's underpinning um, these, these decisions. I loved the retargeting um, presentation where they went through the impressions and queries and really got through to um, the, 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 the ROAS and cost per click because that is one element of um, a digital marketer's job. And many of you guys would probably be very familiar with understanding that funnel, but how does that then impact the broader set of goals from, from the business? Um, I've suggested that when you look at ads, these marketplace fees, when you take into account logistics, um, if you want to be part of the Prime program for Amazon, that, that kind of becomes the new customer acquisition cost, doesn't it? Because if you're going to spend 15% for um, Amazon marketplace uh, in the, in the just to, just to be listed and, and, and transacting, and then another five to 10% for advertising, and then maybe a couple more percentage points for the fulfillment, suddenly you've got 25% that if you'd applied that to Google Shopping, um, maybe you would have been able to fulfill at a lower price, um, and you might have actually better campaigns with customers that can give you better data and have a better customer lifetime value. So really understand the, the, the costs and drivers that are underneath that and use your business intelligence to then drive the campaigns that you're running. If you've got um, a ton of stock sitting in a warehouse somewhere, um, all great that you've got a roll has of you know, 10 and uh, you're, you're, you're throwing away money with that product sitting in, in that warehouse. I think this is very obvious to probably many of the people that are in this room, right? digital marketers and e-commerce, um, but probably your stakeholders that are in your business are not fully aware of the capabilities of these platforms. And so actually my last strategy is, is one that really doesn't have anything to do with the platforms at all, but has a lot to do with um, how you manage your business. I said make friends with, with those that have the money, right? If you can befriend the CFO and you can help him understand or, or her to understand the underpinning math that is underneath that customer acquisition strategy, then you can really leverage um, the business case and, and set a budget with them that makes sense. And lastly, you know, sharing is caring. If you can use that example of taking the money from the supply chain and run your campaigns with it, that's how you'll be able to, to increase your budget and, and your return on investment. I just wanted to finish off with some positioning slides on who we are and maybe who ch how Channel Advisor can help your business with this cross-border trade. We're helping generate 10 billion in revenue uh, for 2,700 clients uh, globally. We're connected up to 130 of the global marketplaces, including all those places that I talked about, Amazon, Google Shopping, Instagram, Facebook, uh, the Zalando presentation that was earlier today, they're one of our partners too. Um, and we're one of the biggest agencies actually, if you take away the amount of um, money that goes through our platform in placing ads, it's, it's actually quite a, quite a substantial amount. Um, we believe that it should be easy for any company to reach consumers and compete online. 
but we think that the challenge is actually quite technical, that to connect up to these places and manage your business um, is an increasing challenge, especially as Amazon makes changes and they have um, some stuff that applies to the US, some stuff that applies to Europe and the rest of their global business. And it's really hard to keep up with all these different partners that, that are out there. So we try to make it really simple. And um, I'm gonna shout out Nick, who's in the, in the audience. He's got his hand waving if, uh, if you see him. He's gonna be at our stand that's um, right towards the entrance and, and I'll be there too. We can run you through this platform uh, diagram where we can help you with marketing, selling and fulfilling and, and some really great data optimization strategies there. And I think if you do that, you can leverage some of the size and scope that we have to help some of the, the biggest companies in the world. It's the same platform that, that we use to uh, manage their business. Uh, we bring and we help to, to manage uh, your business. Um, that's my presentation, thank you. Thanks a lot, Alanda. Thank Thanks you. a lot.